Now, how can we simplify this complex fraction? 3 plus 1 fourth divided by 5 minus 1 fourth. Whenever you have a complex rational expression, what you want to do is you want to clear away the fractions within the larger fraction. And you can do that by multiplying by the denominator of the smaller fractions, which in this case is 4. So let's distribute the 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And 4 times 1 fourth, that's 4 divided by 4, that's 1. And then 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 1 fourth is 1. 12 plus 1 is 13. 20 minus 1 is 19. And so that is the answer. Now let's try another example. 7 plus 1 over x divided by 3 minus 1 over y. What we need to do is we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator of these two fractions, which is simply x times y. So if we multiply 7 by xy, it's going to be 7xy. 1 over x times xy, the x variables will cancel, and we're going to get y. On the bottom, we have 3 times xy. And then 1 over y times xy, and y will cancel, leaving behind x. The last thing we can do is factor. In the numerator, we can take out the GCF, which is y, and that will leave us with 7x plus 1. In the denominator, we can take out an x, which will leave us with 3x, or rather 3y, minus 1. And so that's the answer for this problem. Let's try this one. 8 minus 1 divided by x squared divided by 4 plus 1 over x. What should we multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by? We need to multiply by x squared. x squared will cancel 1 over x squared and 1 over x at the same time. So now let's multiply. So 8 times x squared that's 8x squared, and then 1 over x squared times x squared. These two will cancel, leaving behind 1. And then we're going to have 4x squared. And then 1 over x times x squared is simply x. And so that's the answer, but in a denominator, we can take out an x if we want to, leaving behind 4x plus 1. So we'll leave it like this. Now let's move on to our next example. 1 over 3 plus 2 over x divided by 5 over y plus 1 over 4. So we need to identify the common denominator. The common denominator has to contain a 3, an x, a y, and a 4. 3 times 4 is 12. So the common denominator is going to be 12xy. So now what is 1 third of 12xy? That's going to be 4xy. 2 over x times 12xy, the x variables will cancel. And so it's just 2 times 12y, which is 24y. 5 over y times 12xy the y variables will cancel, and so it's 5 times 12x, which is 60x. And then 1 fourth of 12xy is 3xy. Now let's factor. On top, we can take out a 4 and a y, which will leave us with x plus 6. On the bottom, we can take out a 3x. 60x divided by 3x is 20. And 3xy divided by 3x is just y. And so that's the answer. Here's the next one. x squared divided by x minus 2 divided by 3x over x squared minus 4. What should we do in this example? Now, we only have one term 
and the numerator of the large fraction. So we can do this two ways. We can write it like this. Or we can try just to cancel some denominators. But I think for this example, let's do it this way. So now let's use the keep change flip principle. Let's keep the first fraction the same. Let's change division to multiplication. And let's flip the second fraction. So x squared is just x times x. And x squared minus 4 can be factored to x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then here we have 3x. So we can cancel an x minus 2, and we can cancel an x. So the final answer is x times x plus 2 divided by 3. And so that's it. Now let's do this the other way. Another way you can do this is first by factoring everything. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2 times x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator of the many fractions. So that's going to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. So these will cancel, and these two will cancel. So on top, we have x squared times x plus 2. On the bottom, we just have 3x. After that, we can cancel an x, and this will give us the same answer, which is uh, x times x plus 2 over 3. Here's the last one for this lesson. Go ahead and try it. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator, which is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 2. If you FOIL x plus 2 times x minus 2, it's equivalent to x squared minus 4. So 7 times all of that, it's going to be 7 times x squared minus 4. Now, because this has an x minus 2, I'm going to use this instead of x squared minus 4. So the x minus 2s will cancel, and it's going to be 2 times x plus 2. Now the 5 doesn't have an x plus 2 or an x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply 5 by x squared minus 4. 1 over x plus 2, I'm going to multiply it by this. And so we can see that the x plus 2s will cancel, leaving behind negative x minus 2. Don't forget about this negative sign. Now let's distribute, and then we can combine like terms. So this is going to be 7x squared minus 28 plus 2x plus 4 divided by 5x squared minus 20 minus x plus 2. So what we now have is 7x squared plus 2x, negative 28 plus 4, that's negative 24. And then 5x squared minus x, negative 20 plus 2, is negative 18. So now let's see if we could factor the two trinomials that we have. So let's multiply 7 times negative 24. 7 times 20, if 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 20 is 140. And 7 times 4 is 28. So if we combine 140 plus 28, that's 168. So what two numbers multiply 
to 168, but add to positive 2. 24, by the way, is divisible by 8 and 3, 6 and 4, and 12 and 2. Now, the reason why I did that is so that we can find some other factors. So because 24 goes into 168, all the numbers that go into 24 also go into 168. So we can divide 168 by 4 if we wanted to. That would be 42. We can divide it by 6. That's going to be uh, 28. If we divide it by 8, that's uh, 21. If we divide it by 12, that's going to be 14. Notice that 12 and 14 differ by 2. But since you want positive 2, let's use negative 12 and positive 14. So let's replace 2x with 14x and negative 12x. Now let's see if we can factor this stuff on the bottom. 5 times negative 18 is negative 90. Two numbers that multiply to negative 90 are negative 10 and positive 9. And also they add up to negative 1. So let's replace negative x with negative 10x plus 9x. And now let's factor by grouping. So let's take out the GCF in the first two terms, which is going to be 7x. And that's going to leave behind x plus 2. And let's take out the GCF in the last two terms, which is negative 12. And that's going to leave x plus 2 as well. On the bottom, let's take out 5x, so we're going to get x minus 2, and then let's take out a 9. So therefore, it's going to be x plus 2 times the stuff on the outside, that's uh, 7x minus 12, divided by x minus 2, and 5x plus 9. So we can't cancel anything, but this is the answer in its fully factored form.